Hello and welcome back to Fully Booked, the Hidden Gems author podcast in which Craig Touch and myself, Roland Hume, chat to some of the interesting figures and leading lights of this crazy industry we're in of writing and self-publishing. And today we are delighted to have a man after my own heart, Walter Broach, who is a spiritual and metaphysical author who writes about all sorts of things that I am into, including how what you project you attract. So Walter, we are delighted to have you with us today. How are you doing? Great. And I'm delighted to be here too. Oh, that's wonderful. And of course, we wouldn't be here without the man himself, Craig Touch, the owner and founder of Hidden Gems and an author himself. How are you doing today, Craig? Doing well. Thank you, Roland. And thanks for joining us, Walter. Uh, yeah, Walter, we're we're great. It's great to have you on. I know you uh, you write about the metaphysical stuff, although that, I mean, the, what we're having you on to talk about today is sort of your uh, experience with publishing and uh, some of the uh, the pitfalls that you've run into, some of the scams that have that you've uh, encountered. Um, but before we jump into that, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you write about and, and how you got into all this? It's um, invisible uh, energy. It's the uh, basic energy of everything that the universe is made out of. People say that we are human beings walking around with souls. And I say it is just the opposite. We are spiritual, our non-material, invisible energy, a basic fundamental energy. The, the, the universe is made out of energy. And the basic energy is invisible and you come, you might call it spiritual. I don't care what you call it. Uh, you can call it God energy, or you can call it frankincense energy, or West Coast energy, East Coast energy, whatever. But it's it's a basic energy, and it vibrates. Now you've probably heard of the law of vibration. The law of vibration is that everything vibrates, and it's in a constant movement there's also a universal law of change that everything is in a constant uh, state of change and everything is in a constant state of motion in other words we are changing and 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 you know you're, ch you're constantly changing every moment of your life you're breathing as you're breathing you're changing as you're growing older you're changing as you're growing smarter you're changing you're always changing continually. This is a, a, a law of, uh, of, of energy or the energy laws. There's a bunch of them and I can repeat them off to you. I don't need to do that now, but uh, it, uh, you want to understand these different laws. And I write about the different laws, the law of uh, change, the law of motion, the law, of the law of attraction, boy, that's been big lately. People have been, been talking about the law of attraction. They say you, you, you think and you affirm, and they don't get it right because they think they're doing the law of attraction, but they don't do it right, and the places that tell them about the law of attraction don't tell them right. When you're doing the law of attraction, which is I affirm everything is, is, is great, but you also have to act on it. If you are manifesting and affirming for yourself, you have to physically put in motion what you want to happen. You have to act like if I want to be Superman and fly to the moon, which is impossible, so I'll never be. It's supposedly it's impossible. I'm not sure, but I uh, if 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 I have to act like I'm flying to the moon, maybe I'll have to get to get some wings, or I'll have to get a rocket ship to ride on, so I can get to the moon. I'm going to have to put something in motion to get it to work, and and just not not just not think it in my mind. That's the law of attraction very easy. Now, when I first started writing, it was about two years ago, uh, I saw that there were a bunch of people that wanted to publish my books. Oh boy, I was popular. This place called Durant's 
said, we want to publish your book. It's so wonderful. Well, so I went up there and I paid a lot of money and because I self-published. My wife said, uh, when I, I, I said, I think I'll publish something. She said, well, self-publish. We did everything else on our own. You don't want to, to uh, uh, you don't want to go to a normal book like, uh, well, I can't remember any of them right now, but I'm old. I'm 86. I'm changing every moment of my life. <laughs> and I hope it's getting better. But it, uh, uh, she said, we did everything else on our own, so let's just self-publish. And I said, okay. And I found out that they're going to charge you a lot of money and they aren't going to do a thing for you. You would think that if somebody's going to publish a book for you, they would promote it a little bit. I like promoting, and I will start promoting that book. And I'm, I will start in the next day or two or ne next week uh, because promoting the book is a completely different thing than writing the book. And you can be a self-publisher. You can be a... Uh, a, uh, a, a, a publisher that works with the, with the or a, a writer that works with the publisher that you pay some and the publisher pays some and the publisher will do a little uh, promoting for you. You can go with a place like Durant's, they'll charge you a lot of money and they won't promote it a bit. They'll right, write so you that. Uh, I, so just to interrupt for a second, I, you know, so the idea of self-publishing, as we generally talk about it, is not having a publisher uh, like at all, right? So you would just take your book, you would put it up on Amazon or, or the other sites um, and and then just do everything yourself. Um, so, but, but where you're saying you talk to uh, this publisher, that's sort of like, you know, a different model. That's that's either the hybrid model or the or the publisher model, right? So um, I, I'm I'm just trying to get some clarity on on what you mean by you know that you're saying you're self publishing, but you were still trying to use this publisher. Yeah, I can publish it, and I can put it up on on Amazon myself. Right. And they have a, they have one at it's AKD something like that that I can put it up there, and it's free for me. And people can download it and they can read it. And I can do ebooks. They're great. And I get paid like, you know, two or three dollars a book for it. Right. If I uh, if I with with the rants, uh, I don't know. It co it costs a lot of money and they don't do a thing and I can put it up on on uh, 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 Amazon if I want. And there's a. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just I'm st I'm still a bit confused about what it was that um, that Durant had had promised you um, because you already were putting it up. It sounds like you were already putting it up yourself on on Amazon. So why yeah. would you pay Durant's money? Like what what were they saying they were going to do for you? Well, because uh, sometimes I'm a little stupid. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Naive, in other words. Naive. <laughs> well, I don't know I, you, you were deceived. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, but but I'm trying to understand what it is that they said that they were going to do. Yeah, they they don't do anything. They they publish it in a hardcover book. Uh, okay, so it was a hardcover well, version. That okay. Yeah, yeah, but there's other places I can uh, upload it to that will publish it. And it, it's print on demand. And if somebody buys one, they print it and send it out to them. Right. Uh, Amazon themselves will do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's what is it? AKD or something like that. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've got it on my. KDP? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Amazon, Kindle Direct Publishing? I think that's what you're referring to. Um, uh, Basecamp, Bowker Identifier Services, 
Oh, that's where I get the uh, the uh, ISBN number from. The ISBN number is the number that goes in libraries and and that, that the book goes by. Uh, book raid. Sign up for free books. Um, yeah, that's fine. I, I was just I wasn't sure if you meant you were you were um, putting it up on KDP. Um, but okay, so you would you would put it up, you'd listed it, and then this publisher approached you, or did you look, did you try seek them out? Yeah, then they downloaded it, and uh, if they whoever if if there's a um, oh cheap books or something like that 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 uh, will will print it out and send it, mail it to them. And they'll mail the hardcover to them. So I did not have to have Durant's print a hardcover book. They cost like $8,000 or something, which was right. a lot of money. And I can only afford about 10 cents. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell myself. I can really so, afford a bit of that, a little more so, than that. So they wanted $8,000 to produce a hardcover uh, copy of your book. That's And that's all that they were, they were going to do for that money? Is that... Is that right? Yeah. Well, then, then I decided that they weren't very good, and so I saw where um, the company that prints Reader's Digest books would be great. So I went up there, and they they cost me seven or eight thousand dollars or something like that, <laughs> and I thought, man, Reader's Digest. Well, they said they'd give me an ad in Razor's Digest. Can you see my hands? That's about how big. That's tiny, about tiny how, ad. Yeah, that's about how big the ad was in Razor's Digest. A, a little postage stamp, basically, right? A little postage stamp, and uh, I decided not to go with them anymore. And uh, there's places that I can go that uh, will print it for free. And that's the, I can go on Amazon Author and they'll print it for free. Uh, I can go, uh, oh, great. Right. I mean, all the print on demand ones are generally that kind of a model where, you know, you're, you're, uh, you set it up and then if people order it, they just print the, the copy then, send it to them, and then they you just get the difference between, you know, what it costs and and, uh, and what it sells for. And yeah, you know, I can, I can go to uh, publishdrive.com, and I believe I can go to bookrate.com. It says sign up for free ebooks, so I'm sure I could go there. Uh, Right, but, uh, but you don't even need any of those services is what we're saying, right? We, don't, we do not need those expensive places. Right. I can now, I can, I can take my book and with, with just, uh, with, 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 with uh, Word and different things, different uh, word processing, features i can make my own book completely i can i can make the the uh, contents i can outline it i can uh, format it so it's beautiful i can make a beautiful uh front page to it a, a beautiful yep. beautiful uh the cover to it cover, yep. mm -hmm. i can get them printed out for free and i'll make like two or three dollars each book without having to go to those high class potent great places Durant got me they said they were they've been publishing books for 150 years or something like that and the other one that that publishes uh you know I thought being um uh, whatever it is uh not facebook uh uh what do you call uh Twitter, uh, what social media or? Yeah, the uh, uh, Twitter or Instagram. Uh, uh, no, Life, Life Reach, 
publishing. They publish Reader's Digest. And I thought with going with them, that would be wonderful. And they're the one that gave me the little little book like that, and that's all. And I can, I can upload them for free now and uh, get them on Publish Drive platform, get them done for free and make two or three dollars each one. And that's all right with me. I don't mind making money. I think making money is good for you. I think it's healthy. So just so I can understand the timeline. So when you decided to publish your book, you did so on your own first, and then these publishers approached you, or did you approach them? I, uh, uh, with, with, uh, with Life Rich, I, I put it on them because they advertise in Durant's. They advertise all over the Internet. We so you, want to book. Okay. Yes. So for Durant's, you went to them then? Yeah. Okay. And this was before you had put it up yourself on Amazon or after? Uh, before. Okay. I didn't know better. I, right. I, okay. I haven't written in years. I right. used to write when I was, oh, 20, 30 years old. And I've, I've been working since then, not writing. And uh, I kind of took it up as a hobby is, uh, a couple of years ago. And all of a sudden, I had a book put together. And I said, you know, and I said, hey, Durant's, they've been doing it 150 years. So I went with them. And I said, they're no good. Then I went with Reader's Digest, Life Rich, and they're no good. Then I went on my own. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty cheap, easy to do. And well, I, I had to format it. That takes a little uh, skill on the computer, but the others didn't take any, you know, I sent them the, the word draft. My, my, uh, I sent them my word, whatever it is. Right, uh, your word document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, document. Yeah, that, that text, that's pretty good. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it basically sounds like, I mean, it was just a lack of knowledge that of what the options were um, when you started. You didn't realize that, you know, self-publishing was something that you could just do on your own without any publisher involved. And this was, uh, you said, about three, two or three years ago? Yeah, and right. I graduated third grade. <laughs> no, I, listen, I mean, it's not... We're very steeped in the industry right now. So in 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 our mind, in a lot of the readers' minds, like KDP doing it all on your own, that's that's where that's what they know about. But it's it's interesting to hear that, you know, they're uh, to be reminded that not everyone is as aware of all of those options. And so when they come online and they say, I'm gonna write a book, they don't automatically think, oh, I can just go to KDP because they might not even realize if that's that. So then they do a search and they might find these publishers and say, hey, I have to do that. Especially when they're from, you know, an era where uh, traditional publishing is was always the thing. That was how you had to do it. So you start looking for a publisher, whereas now you don't even need a publisher. You are your own publisher. Yeah. I've been I've been messing with computers for forty years. Right. I ought to know my way around, but um, I didn't. I, I mean, I was stupid. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was, no, it's I, it's, it's you know I it's just, naive. I mean, you were naive. You 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 in this, not even naive. You just you weren't aware of the options, and not everyone will be right. And that's, that's the thing. Like, there's everyone can, and we talk about this a bit. You know, in in the other context of. You know, when people sell uh, their books on Amazon, one of the things that Amazon does is they um, they'll hijack the search. They'll they'll add in books, uh, other people's books. So if you were to search for your own book and you were a famous author like Stephen King, sometimes you could put in Stephen King. But the first book that comes up isn't even Stephen King's. It's somebody who paid to to advertise using his name so much money that he, they come up first in the search. So what happens? It's the same sort of thing is with that publishing is. People go to search. They go on to Google and they start searching for for how to publish a book. And Amazon might not be the first uh, the first thing that comes up. It could be all these other publishers who are paying to be top of the top of the thing. And then and then everyone sort of clicks on them and then goes down this rabbit hole of paying money and and getting very little out of it, which is what it sounds like happened. Durant's is the first place it comes up. Right. Yeah. They have it's a funny. 
I was just thinking my family's been in, in publishing for, for sort of four generations. And I remember in the 80s hearing a lot about these things called vanity presses, which were where, you know, if you struggled getting your book published, there were these publishers who would do it for you. And back then, I think it made a lot of sense to people because you didn't have print on demand and you didn't have self-publishing. Um, and so these people now, you know, that that same kind of like scam thing has continued, but they're very credible. There are lots of writers out there who put together really good books, but writing a book and marketing a book are two separate, uh, separate skill sets. And so I think you can be a very smart, very uh, intelligent author who can still be a victim of predatory companies like Durant's who, uh, you know, just want to take your money and not give you anything in return for it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an unfortunate, it's a big problem in this industry that has not really gone away is, is you know, I think as the industry has sort of gone more towards self-publishing, a lot of the other publishers that um, were in the more traditional spaces, even the vanity presses or, the, or it sounds like Reader's Digest or whatever it is, they've had to sort of resort to some of these tactics to try to get to to salvage their business model because it's it's sort of gone completely away from them yeah in fact after i self-published i sent one into uh llewellyn which is uh, i think is a high class uh publisher uh but I, and i have read books by them and i got a really nice re a really nice rejection they said we really like your writing but we don't publish books like this anymore because they don't sell. And my, my genre is a very unpopular, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a, a niche. It's a niche market. It's a very small market. And I don't mind. I don't, I don't just want to sell a hundred thousand books. I'd like to sell a couple of thousand. Be fine. And I'll do it. And and I like promoting books. I, I well, I like promoting things. I was I sold real estate for oh 40 years. That's how I made a living. And uh I like promoting the houses and I'm I'm gonna like promoting the books. I'm just getting into book promotion now, and I think I'll do a good job because I enjoy doing it. I just like promoting stuff, it's crazy. It uh, well, as, I'm a little crazy, and you, if you want to promote stuff, you have to be a little crazy. I think. Maybe you have to be a little crazy if you want to write stuff. It's more of a hobby. It started out as a hobby. Now it's getting to be serious because I'm getting yeah. interested in it, really interested in this stuff I'm writing. It um, yeah, it, it's it, and I research it. I, every board I well. No, this last book, it's the uh, uh, Spiritual Energy and You. It'll be coming out the next month. And uh, I, I I did some freelancing, I guess you'd call it, in that one. I didn't didn't look every, everything up. I, I didn't research it. But I, I uh, worked in a, a, I ran a public library system for a few years. And I liked working in the library because I liked doing research. And I, uh, so I research all this stuff and I try to make it as true and true to life as I possibly can. And I enjoy writing it. It's kind of, it's kind of a hobby. And uh, well, it, 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 it's, it's turned into a profession now. I'm on my third book. Well, that's and, great. and so I think as a niche, like as you say, it's a niche uh, market, but that's exactly what self-publishing is the best at, right? Because the big publishers never wanted to take a chance on books like this that they didn't think had a huge market because they wouldn't make the money back that they would have to outlay. But you, but self-publishing has allowed people to, because you can publish on your own, not spend any money really, and then... Uh, get the majority of the money you know the old publishers they take you know 90 percent of if more not more of the of the share of the books right so you would get a pittance for each copy sold now you're getting you know 70 80 percent of the money and 
you can be profitable in a niche even though there's less readers for it because you're getting so much more of the money and you're not having to pay out any money up front. So I think that uh, like just because you write in the niche, that, that doesn't mean you can't be successful. You can be gr greatly successful, but only by self-publishing it and not putting out, you know, a bunch of money to these publishers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, I, I make more money by publishing it on Amazon than I do on uh, one of these others. I won't mention them anymore. I don't want to publicize right. them. Well, well, plus, you know, you had to outlay all the money in the first place, and you probably never made that back. Yeah, you got you to gotta sell thousands and thousands of books before you start making money on them. Right. I think if I, if I sell it on, well. And the other issue with those is, like, they have no, they have no, um, um, motivation to help you market like you mentioned like they're not doing anything but there's no reason for them to because they're no longer you know the old publishers they would pay for all that stuff of all that marketing right but now they've pushed all that cost to you they charge you eight thousand dollars and they've taken that money and and it, whether you sell a book or not they have their eight thousand dollars they don't need to now spend some of their own money marketing your book to try to help you sell it that, that doesn't benefit them i'm going to tell you something about Dorance. I put a feed from my web page to Durant's, hoping that they could find the book on Durant's. I couldn't find it on Durant's. I went up on Durant's and looked for that sucker, and I couldn't. They have a they have a a, a library supposedly. I could not find. Uh, the name of that book is, uh, I don't know, Spiritual Energy Explained. I went up on Durant's and looked for Spiritual Energy Explained. I couldn't find it. I went up to Durant's and looked up Walter Broach, which nobody knows in the whole world, and I couldn't find it. <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, that's, I know. I mean, that's, that's, you couldn't even find it on their website. And they're the ones who charge you all that money to market your book, and they can't even market your book on their well, website. Well, their thing is they they say they they've been doing this longer than anybody else in the world. They've been doing it for 150 years, and they were the first person to do self-publishing. Well, they're gonna be the last time they're gonna do it for me. I mean, I don't even consider that self-publishing, right? Like, it's not. It's they're 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 publishing it. They're putting the book together for you. They're doing whatever it is they do. But, I mean, if if anything, it's sort of more of a hybrid model. But it's certainly not self-publishing, in my opinion. Great God, make more more money off of you if I asked you to publish it, and you'd have to go up there and find out a way to do it. Yeah, it's a complete ripoff. Yeah. I think. But yeah, I, I mean, I learned a lesson, so I think it's valuable. Well, expensive lesson, but yeah. <laughs> um, but so when they did, you ever contact them and say, "Hey, how come I can't find my book?" No, oh, no, no. Just yeah, buy uh, about spiritual energy and spiritual energy explained. Be sure to buy those books if you're watching this. They're good. They're interesting. If you're interested in invisible energy or the basic energy of the universe, what you're made out of, that's my commercial. Well, we will give you a chance to have a commercial uh, in a little while when we wrap things this thing up. But I was I was going to say, since we are approaching the end of the podcast, what advice would you have for aspiring authors out there to avoid getting scammed by companies like this? I would have them go to Hidden Gems Books and have them help me. Because I think you all probably know how to help people. And you, I think you're experts at it. Well, we, yeah, we definitely wouldn't have sent, sent you over to, the, to any of these kind of websites for sure. Um, I, I'm also sort of wondering about 
like when you so you pay that money and they produce these books for you do they give you the copies of the books for you to then go sell or how yeah. does it work here's here's a, a copy of about oh. spiritual energy right so that was from what they uh from the company that you paid that's oh how many pages no no so the company that you paid that was the what they produced right yeah this is uh life rich and they, uh, what, about, what about the durant's one that you originally did did they send you copies of the book like oh, did yeah. you get like a big did you get like a big crate of books so it's not an on-demand publishing is sort of what i'm trying to figure out here right they're, no, they're basically it's saying not a total rip -off. they they give you uh, okay. a couple of uh, soft covers and a couple of hard covers Oh wait, for eight thousand dollars, they gave you four copies. No, I mean like, where are all the where are all the the copies that people, you know, if somebody wants to buy it, are they storing them in their warehouse kind of thing, and then you have to order it from their website to get it? They ain't storing it in the warehouse. Or so they where are with the rants? They aren't even storing it in their bookstore. I don't think. So where did all that money go? Is my question. <laughs> it goes to durant's right but i mean like you paid them to produce a hardcover copy of your book i would assume that they would create a whole bunch of copies and then i mean the old vanity press that that was their model they take your money they they produce the the physical copy of your book and then send you you know a thousand copies of it and say okay go sell it but it sounds like in this case they didn't even do that you, they sent um, me four or five copies of right. uh i don't know how many they're they're sitting out in my living room i i uh i guess i could put them on my page and sell them it uh but i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna i uh went with somebody else that's right. doing it for free i think it was book rate or something like that yeah well the on-demand model makes more sense because then they're not outlaying any money really i mean it's just the initial sort of typesetting or whatever it is that they have to do and then if people order it that's when they print the copy of the book you 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 publish books don't you no we don't we don't publish books we just work with uh you know you just work houses. with uh, with uh, you don't do any uh uh, okay, I was going to give you a plug. I thought you deserved a plug. <laughs> we, we, would, we would just be sort of... Uh, sorry, we're losing you, Craig. Oh, sorry. We would just be helping people uh, um, not make these sort of uh, mistakes, <laughs> giving advice. And, and we have our blog and our podcast to sort of talk to people about nope. that. Yeah. And I'm going to put this on my page. If I can download it, I bet I can. Yeah. Can't I download this on my yeah, page? Oh, so the, the, yeah, the podcast, when it's done, yeah, we'll have uh, yes, we'll yes. a link. Yep. Yes, sure. we'll do that. It'll probably cost me $45. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you'll well, You can put a, and, put a link to a podcast right on your page. Yeah, I, I think it's we well oh, worth we the price. Be... There's no price. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a good kind of advertising. I think, I think that's I, a... I think... You, you do not who? Oh, hang on. I, th I can't. I think we're, lo we're losing Craig because of the internet. Craig, are you still there? Oh, you guys are going along fine. It's me who's having the problem, right? Yeah, I think I think I think Roland, we might be having problems with Roland's connection because Walter and I are able to uh, to still talk. Yeah, That's I I, I, uh, yeah. I see I, 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 I see you, you too, Roland. Yeah, he's just he's moving a little jerky. Uh, so oh no, I think a little jerky. <laughs> My wife um, calls a little jerky every once in a while. <laughs> um yeah so uh, okay so basically i mean at the end of the day the the issue here is you know you shouldn't have to at any point outlay money to publish your book other than things like if you want to hire somebody to do a cover for you if you want to hire somebody to format your book or to edit your book or to write a blurb but those are all individual pieces that you could do yourself too but 
a lot of authors do sort of outsource to to create a, a stronger copy of their book. But at the end of the day, taking the book, putting it up for sale, and that is not something you have to use a publisher for. And you I, I can book. get a cover done for a hundred dollars. Right. I can also do a cover myself. Right. Very easily. I got a program exactly. on here that do covers for me for free. Exactly. That's then that's what I'm saying is like you can do all those things for free. You can a lot of authors do decide to 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 pay people for that, but that's a different thing. That's like you're paying for this one specific service, not to say here publish my book and they're going to take thousands of dollars and then not do it. Last roll. I learned the hard way and I hope everybody that listens to this will learn the easy way. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh and, and I mean that's that's part of it is like you know, finding the value for your money is um, in the publishing world. Like, I mean, you really, when I started, I did everything myself. I didn't, I didn't pay for anything. But as I went, and as I started, you know, publishing and, and getting some money, I'd roll that profits back in, I realized, okay, the covers I was doing myself, weren't that great. So I hired a cover designer, right? And I spent a hundred bucks, like a couple hundred bucks. And I got a really good cover, which helps sell my book better, right? A strong cover helps sell the book. Uh, I was okay with writing blurbs, but some people aren't. So they hire a blurb writer. They, you know, we have a blurb writing service or, or other people do as well. You, yeah, An editor, it's it always good to have an editor so you can spend money on that. But you shouldn't be taking this, you know, and saying here to a publisher and saying, here's this massive amount of money and then, get back very little for it. Like, I mean, you you want to say, okay, this is what I want to get back for the money I'm outlaying and it shouldn't be thousands of dollars. You're right. It, uh, I don't know how they, well, I know how they get away with it. The Reader's Digest, everybody's heard of the Reader's Digest and they think it's, you know, it has all these, these really nice articles in it how to heal yourself, how to be happy, and all that kind of thing. So they, oh, that's a really nice place. So they, they go to LifeRich or Durant's. They're, they're advertised all over the, uh, the place. And uh, they say, oh, we want to read your book. It's, it's, it's we're going to make you a bestseller and all that kind of stuff. And there's others out there. I think there's probably 40 or 50 of them that... Uh, if I don't know, I, I just happen to wake up and say, hey, maybe there's something better than this out there. And I started looking and I found places that would would uh, publish it for free and split the money with me. I dog. That's great. And uh, oh, what are they called? They're. Called, but you don't uh, even need but but you don't even need those right like because you can just take the book you can go right onto amazon kdp upload your book your cover and that's it you don't have to pay any of those publishers anything there's no splitting needed right amazon will take their share the 30 percent, and then you would get your 70 percent, and that's it you don't have to share it with anybody no they take about 250 or three dollars something like that it's just not very much and they sell it for eight or ten dollars so uh you you make out pretty good yeah yeah um so it doesn't sound like <laughs> i'm i'm getting a message from roll and he so he he uh his internet sort of uh conked out on him and he, it's not even letting him rejoin so um but we are sort of oh here he is there he is um so <laughs> roland i think you're back now we were we were just sort of wrapping up well, I appreciate you talking to me for so long. It, um, I'm going to download this and put it on my computer. I promise. It's yeah. Uh, well, we'll, I think we'll we'll send you a link to it uh, once it's live, okay. and that'll probably be you know in a in. Well, we'll talk about that. But but uh, Roland, if you're on, um, I'm not sure if you can hear us or not. But uh, if so, then it doesn't sound Let's like exactly you want. We see him, but I think his internet is uh, there. He is still not not really working. Well, so. uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Absolutely. Or, well, um, Walter, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been um, we had some technical issues, but it's been a really wonderful discussion. And uh, Craig, did you uh, did you already ask Walter where everyone can go and find out about him and about his books and everything like that? Not yet. Nope, not yet. Walter, why don't you tell us uh, where we can, where people can find you? Oh, uh, 
uh, https colon slash slash well, that's it walterbroach.com and i'll have all my books up there because that's my author page that you is know, wonderful we'll, we'll pop a link down pardon you you uh you can also go on facebook and look for walter broach on facebook and uh i don't know i'm in a couple of other places but walterbroach.com is as good as any because i'll always on all my books i'll have uh places where you can buy them or check into them and read part of the you know a half a chapter or a whole chapter or something it uh and i have a blog on there that you can uh look at different things about spiritual energy in the blog it's a, it's a nice it's an author's page it's a good author's page i think i created it little little braggadocio there i i'm proud of it i think it looks good and i i appreciate you all that uh, you have talked to me way longer than i thought you would talk to me and i appreciate it I really do. No problem. We thank you for coming on and, and sharing your experience with us. So hopefully we'll help other authors uh, sort of not fall into some of those same pitfalls that uh, you unfortunately had to go through. You're nice people. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we will put a link to your website down below. And if you've listened to this podcast and enjoyed it, and you want to leave Walter a comment about all of the things he shared with us today, then do not be a stranger. And while you're down there, why not hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. And there's a bell icon, which could uh, notify you every time there is a new episode of Fully Booked. And we'll be back with a brand new episode next week. So until then, thank you very much.